Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the spectacular Ender NHL coaching series. Um, yeah, it's been a little while since we did this. I think this is number four now, um, at least that I've released publicly. But, um, yeah, so uh, making progress, you know, just learning to kind of do more offensive stuff, be more confident, all that. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, this, this will be a, an interesting day, game to watch. I was trying to find something to watch because there ha we haven't, neither of us have actually saved a lot of like games recently. Like I, this is from five days ago, apparently. So I don't remember it all that well, um, which should be interesting because it, it'll be a little bit of a different perspective as normally I remember the games pretty well and what I want to talk about and this time it'll be I'll be looking at it with a little bit more of a fresh perspective since it's not as fresh in my mind but um but yeah we'll just uh hop right into it I actually have this as you can see already stopped at the first thing halfway through the period first thing I want to talk about um just a, a little thing here where okay that's right <laughs> Uh, had a little technical hiccup. Anyway, a uh, little thing here where you're over here in the corner. Uh, Ty gave it to you. I don't remember this game super well, so I don't remember. I've been messing with my builds a lot, but I'm here kind of in the slot. Um, I think I have gold 1T on this build. Uh, when, when I mean, one-timers are great, obviously, in general, but especially when you know someone has a the gold 1T, you really want to hit them. And I know you do go for this pass here, but there's kind of a guy like right in the passing lane. So what you want to try and do here is... Uh, change the passing lane. Um, I'm going to, I think I try to, well, I kind of hold up here because I found like a really nice spot where I'm, they're not on me yet. I have some room here. Um, if I go basically I'm in a triangle in between these guys, it's a nice spot around me where I'm wide open, but if I go any direction, I might get too close to one of these guys' sticks that they could prevent me from shooting it. So this is just a situation where you have to, find a way to open up that passing lane um you kind of came in with it up this way and then uh tylenol uh had the puck you gave it to him he skated behind the net and gave it back to you i think you probably like you're in a decent spot here but you probably could have followed him a little less closely um but you're kind of following behind the net which forces like these guys to really play aggressive behind the net because you're both there um, but you probably could have held up more a little bit in this area if you hadn't followed him as aggressively. But regardless, this is where you are right now. Um, and so I think what it's not what you did here. You ended up, I think, turning it over, but it like hit this guy or whatever. But anyway, what you could do here is do the outside spinorama move. So you want to turn, you want to make, make sure you're turning with the puck towards the boards. And then as you're turning... When you're kind of, you know, around the back and the puck's over on this, in this area, then you can try the pass across. And that's going to happen really quick, and it's going to throw the, these guys off. They're almost definitely not going to expect you to do that. So these guys, this guy is probably going to try and poke you. This guy, but he also might try and cover Ty behind the net. Um, this guy is almost definitely going to try and poke you because he thinks he might try to throw the pass out in front right away or cut in front of the net. So he wants to cut you off at the side of the net and take away your options. So if you just do a quick little spin to the outside here and put the puck over here, suddenly the angle's totally different. Whereas here it's completely covered. Uh, but if you have it over here, suddenly there's a lane over to my stick. Um, and just that little move. And it's something I'm trying to, you know, I mentioned this before with the spinorama passes, but it's something I'm trying to do with myself as well to try and get more into a habit of it because it can be so useful to just quick change the angle uh, where they think they have a passing lane covered and then suddenly they don't. Um, but if you do that here, that's that's a huge play. Um, because I guarantee you neither of these guys is going to be prepared to stop that. You're going to protect the puck around this side this guy's not going to be able to poke it. This guy's not going to be able to poke it. Only thing he can do is try to turn and keep himself around this area to block the passing lane. But he's, like I said, probably not going to do that. He's probably going to be focused on cutting you off the side of the net. So you you make that quick turn and hit the pass. And, it, I mean, that's that's huge if you can do that. Um, but as we see is let this play out here. Yeah, you kind of like, like tried to 
almost try to like force your way to the front. I don't know if you're trying to maybe pass it between the two guys, but you were obviously going past, and I think you maybe just got a little caught up and weren't sure exactly what to do. But I think if you have a little more confidence when you're here with the puck, and you know you're really like prepared and ready to do it on a moment's notice, like it's it's hard to incorporate that kind of into your game. You know anything that you're not familiar with, like especially a little spin move like that on you know in such short notice basically but um yeah i mean if you can do that it's it's going to be huge and it'll really elevate your play when you can you know read the play so quickly and make a quick reactionary move like that to open up a passing lane that's like i said i think i have gold seat one t on this build so if you turn if you spin make that pass and it hits me which it probably will i mean that's just that's probably a goal because the goalie was like he was actually hugging the post which you know, for goalies, I, I don't recommend ever actually holding the post. I recommend, like, you know, staying, like, overlapping the post with your body because the hold post animation is horrible. Um, but anyway, not a goalie coaching video, but yeah. With him holding the post here, I probably I have gold 1T, I think, and I probably would have hammered into the corner. He wouldn't have had a chance. Um, but yeah, just something to think about. Um one of those moments where a little bit of poise and a quick reaction can make a big difference. And now here we are actually immediately after that. They haven't even gotten the puck out of the zone yet. And uh, you're going to get another awesome opportunity here. And I'll let it play out a little bit. He whiffs on that. Somehow gets it. I don't know how they didn't pick it up. Then he makes a nice pass to hit you. Now you've got this room here. As of right now, I'm totally covered. There's, there's no, I mean, especially this is a big guy. Um, so chances are, if you try to force a pass through, it's, it's one way or another, it's going to hit him. Um, that's just kind of the way the game works. Um, but you do have a lane to the net. He's a big guy. So if you get close to him, he can hit you off the puck. Uh, he also will have a longer stick. So you have to keep that in mind with the big guys is that they might be a little slower, but they are going to have a longer stick. So you have to keep that in mind is they're going to have a little bit longer range to poke check you. But as of right now, at least you've got some room to kind of skate this in and you are, you do have your forehand to the outside here, which in this situation is helpful because this guy's in the middle and it's going to keep the puck further away from him. So you can kind of try and, hold it to your forehand here and maybe try to protect it a bit as you cut closer to the net. And I think you have room here to make the goalie think at least that you're, that you might actually be able to pull it over to the backhand. And it, what you can, even can do is you can, you definitely have enough room to skate it in a little bit and make a quick little backhand forehand move and shoot it. Um, and, and try to snipe them short side. Um, I think if you, do a backhand forehand he would probably think that you're gonna go all the way across backhand and but quick pull it back forehand you might beat him with that um i mean you never know it's always a guessing game you never know what the goalie's gonna do the goalie never knows what you're gonna do it's all about guessing and trying to predict but um the one option you don't have right here is me because at the at this exact moment i'm totally shut down um as we you know kind of play it out a little bit now he's like really committed to you, but he's still like right in this passing lane and it's kind of tough. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure if I slowed down or I probably could have driven, driven this harder and it been there for like a rebound or made the passing angle a little easier. Um, probably more I could have done here to, to get open better, I guess. But in any case, he's, you still have got a good chance to shoot this here, like right about here, I think. You can probably take it just a step further and try to fake backhand and make him think you're going to go across. Pull it back for, forehand and try to snipe him short side. I doubt that you would actually, from this point, be able to beat this guy's stick to the net and actually cut across on the backhand. But you could probably make the goalie think that you're going to do it. Um, but instead that guy's kind of still in the passing lane and you try to force it through him and you know, he's just, he's big, he's skating right in the lane. It hits his skates and gets caught up, caught up. So, uh, you know, time and a place for everything. This is one where I think this has got to be a shot, but I mean, obviously it's great that you have the vision to recognize passes like that. Like you never want to be the guy that doesn't, 
you know, oh, there's a wide open pass for a great opportunity, but you never make the pass. Um, but it is still very important to, you know, you get a chance like this, a two-on-one down low, and you really want to make something out of it, especially when you're playing against better teams. Getting chances like this, I mean, they're not, they don't happen often, <laughs> you know. It's hard to get, you know, teams like that, it's hard to get through the neutral zone. Uh, usually they have zero ping, which means if you get within half a mile of them, they poke it away from you automatically. So if you get a chance like this, you got to just take it and go for the shot. Uh, towards the end, you maybe, like I said in the last one, you maybe could have do, done a spin move to force that pass over to me, which might have worked, but I, I just I think this is an opportunity where you can make cut in just a little bit, make the goalie think that you have the room to take it across, but try to go back short side because I really don't think you would have gotten it across. As you can see, by the time you passed it, I mean, he's already right on top of you. But yeah, definitely I think trying to shoot there was, was the way to go. And a little bit of a quick one here. Um, you kind of the C's part for you here is uh, Nomad passed it to you up the middle. The C's part for you, uh, you're just unfortunately your build is just too big to really take advantage of that. Is they're just gonna defensemen are so fast in this game. You know they, they don't lose any speed transitioning from forward skating to backward skating. Um, you know, they're able to pivot really well without losing any speed or momentum or anything. It's kind of frustrating um, just how stifling the defense can be and how impossible it can be to protect the puck sometimes. But if you were running a faster bit, like if you had my build here, I definitely think you could do like a, a, a single or even a double like self-sauce pass to kind of try and boost through here. And you, if you had a smaller build, you could probably make this. Um, I know you don't normally play like smaller builds, but just something to keep in mind if you are using a build with speed, like if you find yourself playing left wing at some point and you're playing a smaller build for that reason, um, this is definitely an opportunity where you could burst through there. But but you're playing a bigger build, so you definitely don't have the speed to take advantage of this gap, unfortunately. But you realize that, and you cut right to the out. You kind of catch him expecting you to try and take that middle lane, and you know that you don't have the speed to make it. So he comes across and you cut back to the outside and get yourself a little room as you enter the zone. They run into each other. It was really terrible play by the defenseman who could just kind of ran into his forwards back checking and took them out of the play. Um, but now you have some room. They come back, you know, about here. Now they're taking it away. So now at this point, uh, if I was left-handed, you could maybe pass it to me for a one-timer here. I'm right-handed, so... Not a whole lot I can do is these guys are right in front of me. It would be really tough to try and make something happen. I could maybe hang onto it and pass it over to Tylenol for a one-timer. Um, you recognize, though, that the passing lane over to him. The ideal, of course, would be to just go right to him for the one-timer, but that's taken away. They got two guys right in the lane. You see that. You recognize, hey, I got some room. I'm going to shoot it. But you wait just a little too long, and they're on you with the poke. Um, I think that's kind of... Something I've noticed in particular playing the last few nights, we've been playing a lot of like, you know, like LG teams and whatnot. Um, but the speed of the game gets so much faster when you play against better teams and everything has to be so much quicker. So I think this is just a situation where you're, you're trying to get a, as close as you can to shoot it, but you've just got to recognize how close you can get and make sure you're getting the shot off well in advance of that guy getting the poke. Because like I said, especially if they have zero ping, you know, they this guy can probably, if this guy, you know, he's here in poking range, but if he has zero ping, he can probably be like where this guy is, or maybe even a little bit further away and still land the poke somehow because the game's just absolutely broken. But uh, yeah, just got to be a little bit quicker. I like, I like the choice. You obviously were going to shoot it, and I like the decision to shoot it. Um, you can try and snipe him or whatever, but you also could have tried a low rebound shot. I don't know, you know, it's speculation because you didn't get the shot off. I don't know where you were going to shoot it, but low rebound here might have worked really well because this guy's really collapsing on the goalie, so the rebound could actually end up getting away from him and over to Tylenol for basically an empty net. Um, but yeah, just these guys get on you quick, and you got to anticipate that and be ready to react, and you got to take the space you have, but make sure that you're that you're making the play before you lose that space as, as the higher up you go, the faster it will be taken away. And at higher levels, it will be taken away very quickly.
One last thing before the period ends, just real quick here. Um, Nomad dumps it around the boards. We don't have much time. I get to the puck. Okay, so you can see Tylenol has some space here. Um, obviously, puck's coming around. I'm going to beat this guy to it. And the obvious play, time winding down, I'm going to get it to him for the one-timer. I think, you know, everybody can see that. Um, but it's just like I said in the last one, it's it's the speed of the game. And you have to be so quick as, you know, this guy ends up getting to me. Like, it looks like I'm going to beat him to it by a good bit because the puck's coming up to me. I'm full speed. Um, this guy has to make a turn to catch up to it. Looks like I'm going to have a lot of time here, but it's it gets taken away so quickly as bang, right there. I barely had enough time to get that pass off, and so unfortunately it doesn't end up working out, but I just wanted to show that as an example of, you know, it, it can look like you have more time and space than you do, but you've got to recognize what's going on and make a, quay, uh, make a play quickly because it can go away in an instant before you realize it, and... You know, like I just, like I said, the harder the opponent, the less time you're going to have to make plays. So you really got to be quick. All right, so we're in the second period here. Um, first thing I notice is, uh, I'm going to point this out because I notice this is a thing that I think happens a lot. Um, I'm hanging on to the puck here, looking to break out. I could have passed it. Like, Tylenol has some room over here. I could have passed it over to... Uh, I don't even know who's was that Roland who's playing over there? I don't even remember. Um, probably Roland or Patrick, I don't know. But either one. Um could have passed it to one of these guys over here. Um, but there's two guys in the way of me making a pass to you here. But see, I'm kind of moving in towards the middle, and maybe this is just like a uh you know, it, it's certainly a little bit like an what I want you to do in this situation. But I think in general it, it's uh, this is a good thing to talk about because if I'm the left wing and I start like cutting, if I make like a really like deep cut into the middle, then what I, at least what I'm looking for is for someone to step up and take my place. Um, because I'm kind of taking your place. So what I'm hoping for here is that either an OMOD will kind of step in and take my place and I'm, I don't remember, honestly. I'd, I'll have to roll this again to see what happens, but I don't think he stepped up into that spot. But regardless of whether he does that or not, what I really want to see is for you to, because I'm moving into the middle of the ice, so I've got that covered. There, we got two guys over on the right side of the ice, but we don't have anybody in this area because you're moving across into the middle where I'm also going. So I think there's kind of a thing where, in general, on the breakouts, you always have to be like, as a forward to support the breakout, you always have to be kind of shifting around back and forth, making cuts sometimes. Um, whatever you have to do to try and give the guy with a puck a lane to get it to you. And at the very least, if you can't do that, you're going to be making the defenders kind of follow you around a bit. And that should open up space for someone else. You know, it should open up space for someone else, even, if, even maybe the puck carrier, to just skate it up. Um, but what I'm looking for you to do here is kind of, is, you know, recognize where I was and kind of fall into that space because even if Nomaha doesn't kind of skate up into that space himself, what I can do is I'm, I'm clearly pulling both of these guys into the middle to follow me because they think that I, well, I don't know, I'm speculating, but they probably think that I'm going to screw up here and turn it over, which I'm not going to do. But, um, at least I don't, I don't think I did it. Maybe I did. I don't, I don't remember. Um, but in any case, I'm pulling these guys in the middle and you're kind of following with them. You're kind of following the play going this direction when we already have guys here, their defenders are going that direction. So what I want to see is you go this direction because there's no open area over here. And with no mod here, Regardless of whether he skates into that area behind me or not, which is something that I just I love when the left defense it recognizes me cutting into the middle and takes my spot because then I always just hit him. It brings the defense into the middle and then I can hit him and he gets room and I love that play. But 
even if he just stands here, which at the moment is what he's doing, if you move over and take this open spot where the defensemen aren't, it might be hard for me to make the pass directly to you. Certainly, it wouldn't be as hard as it is right now where they're directly between us. But if you're over here, I can just drop it over to Nomad and he can get it up to you immediately. And these guys are totally out of the play. This, you got to worry about this guy, but this guy is so far out of the way that you have room to cut into the middle. And then by that time, Tylenol is probably all the way over here with some room on the far side. So you can pass it over to him if you need to. So this should be an easy, not only breakout, but zone entry for us. If you come over here, and it's kind of something I've you know talked about in previous videos, but I'll talk about it again, where you just have to read the game in advance you know you have to be multiple steps ahead like a chess game um you know i'm looking at this as if you're over here i pass to nomad he hits you and then you're into the middle and it should be an easy zone entry um so that's something to keep in mind just like on the on the breakouts always make sure that you're finding a lane to get open because as it happens on this play it just so happened that you kind of found a lane not to be open. Maybe maybe you're thinking, okay, if I give it over to uh, Tylenol, then he can hit you in the middle. But my concern there is just this guy in the middle is going to make that tough, and these guys are both moving that direction already. So if you try that, there's probably going to be pressure on that play, whereas I think if we get them all, all three of these guys moving to the right and then go back to the left there's probably a lot less pressure, and I, I think there's basically a free zone entry at that point. So what, what ended up happening on that play is I gave it to Nomad, and we kind of just, like, reset. And you're still kind of out at center here where, like, you're too far away, and there's too many guys in between for you to really be able to be hit. There's a guy in the middle here, so I'm cutting left to try and make a lane here. Um... And I think that yeah, you kind of go left as well, but you run right into that guy, and now you kind of cut back out to the to the middle. But I get it here, and now you've kind of pulled him into the middle because he's like, okay, I'm going to try to hit you in the middle. And I maybe could have. I don't know. I just, these passes where the guy is very close, I try not to make those because sometimes it'll work, but if you try a pass like this, especially against like a zero ping team, it's never going to work. Um, they're always going to pick it up, and if they don't pick it up, they will at least like be in a position where their stick just kind of exists and touches your stick and makes you lose the puck, and then they just get it. Um, so you, you kind of have to play the game as if you're expecting that to happen. Um, but yeah, so you kind of get this guy moving into the middle to cover that. So then, as I was just talking about a minute ago, you kind of swerve back and forth to create um, to create a lane or something, you know, to, to get the get them moving and then get to the open area is what you want to do. Um, so you do get him moving into the middle, and then you stay behind it. You keep going straight, and you stay behind him, and now that is completely closed off. And I just kind of have to skate it up here. But if you if you recognize that and cut over, like if you were already starting to cut over, you'd be wide open. You'd have a little room to go up here, and then you'd probably get shut off by this guy at the line, but then, you know, you can throw it back to me, or you can even try, like, a cross, you know, horizontal dump over and hope to pick up Ty on the far side or something. Um, but, you know, we would have options, and we'd be progressing towards getting into the zone. But as it is right here, you kind of take a little too long to recognize that you need to cut back to the outside, and because of that, you know, not really able to get it to you, I have to skate it up and kind of, you know, be very deliberate and because i had to slow down and be very deliberate let this big guy catch up to me he just bumps me from behind and takes it i should have you know i should have circled back or there's something better i could have done here obviously but if you had cut to the outside on that we probably would have had a better time getting in um but uh yeah and uh just real quick here um as i just you know mentioned a second ago about how uh, you have to be careful about making passes with guys, you know, too close. Even if it looks like you're open to, to pick up the pass, if you got a guy close to you, they can just kind of steal it right away. I actually make a bad pass here where it looks like you're kind of, like, getting open up this way. I, I, I worry about making these, like, angle passes because every time I make these, like, these particular angle passes, 
they end up like really weak and not because i think what happens is the game tries to lead the guy so it looks like he's open if i take this lane but what's actually going to happen is my guy's going to try and predict him being like up in this area so it's going to pass at this angle and then this guy's going to pick it up otherwise i would just pass it over here because he's wide open um but i kind of wait a little bit now you've got a little room but this was this was a bad pass and i'm going to tell you why i should have gone to tylenol because he has a ton of room over here and I actually don't remember. I might have been trying to do that, but for, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I go to you, and this guy's just charging in on you. The moment you get this puck, you're either going to die, or if he doesn't hit you, uh, he's just kind of like, like poke check, or just, again, just existing in like within stick range of the guy can just cause him to lose the puck, and then you can just kind of take it away sometimes. Actually, it's actually kind of a nice strategy on defense to just sometimes not even poke check the guy but just kind of stand inside his stick and and get, like try to get it sometimes that actually works better than poke checking but i digress i digress um this was a bad pass because by the time you get it this guy's right on you i mean he is you're in the pat you're in the pickup animation he's like ready with the poke check it was a horribly timed pass and it somehow works out i mean it honestly that pass worked out because the game is bad like that guy when a, that was a great play by that guy and i mean a great play by you to receive the puck and immediately cut against him and go to the inside but terrible pass by me and just yeah that that exactly is the kind of thing that i think you need to be careful of because that pass should not have worked it's a miracle that it worked the game's terrible and that's the only reason that it happened because that was a great step up and a perfectly timed poke by this guy to take the puck away but you just kind of ended up with it somehow but yeah a perfect example you know me screwing up on the pass that's exactly not a pass to make i should have 100 percent gone to tylenol on that one so there hasn't been a whole lot uh to say uh, for about the last like period or so um, but there is kind of a minor thing here that I that I'm kind of doing that I, I want to point out a little bit because yeah I, I talked about before obviously about how it's important to you know maneuver yourself so that you're getting open it's important for the puck carrier to make a move to open up passing lanes or even shooting lane or a skating lane or whatever uh you know very important for the puck carrier to open up lanes but it's also important for you know other people to get open uh especially if you're trying to you know be in a, a scoring position you want to try and get open you don't want to just stand where you're covered um so you know pucks going around behind the net right now i'm open if he were, you know, if Tylenol had the puck over here right now, I'd be open for the one-timer. Um, but as the play develops, obviously, I'm, you know, kind of sitting up here. There's a lot of traffic in the blue area, so I don't I don't want to be there. I want to be a little higher. I, again, believe I have gold 1T on this build, so I can be a little further away from the net, and, you know, the one-timer will still be good. It's not, I don't need to be right in front of the net. Um actually at this range even if i didn't have one t i would probably still trigger close quarters um but anyway i just want to point this out where you know this guy kind of comes over to me he's in the in the area he obviously now you have the puck so now you could make this pass into this area he's here to, to you know prevent that he obviously doesn't want that to happen but i'm gonna try and kind of explain this where this guy's on me and i'm kind of standing here because i recognize that this is like an area where you could potentially get the puck to me because if i go any closer i mean this guy's here they're both here i can't really go any closer um, but also this guy's running at you he has a stick here so if you're gonna make a pass it has to be kind of into like this area so i'm kind of trying to be a little closer to that area but i'm recognizing that like now you're in a position where okay you're getting bumped you're protecting the puck along the boards so i know you're you're probably looking to like change direction or something and go back into this area which means i have to try and be out into this area so that there's an angle for the pass but what i'm going to kind of do is you don't even have the puck anymore they've opened up all this space ty's about to get the puck he has all this space to potentially walk out in front of the net 
And I'm just kind of sitting here allowing this guy to cover me for a minute. Um, and I, that maybe sounds a little weird, but like, I don't really care about getting around him at that moment. But now, Tylenol has the puck, and he's over here. This guy has kind of drifted back a little bit because I allowed him to cover me in this area. And now, I just kind of sprint off of him, push away from him, and now... I'm into this area. It's open. He kind of like got a little complacent drifting into this area to cover me because that's where I was. I kind of just let myself be here. And then once you guys got the puck in a position where it could be passed out into here, I pushed around him and got open. Um, and so uh, unfortunately he ended up grabbing the puck. Um, but if you had grabbed the puck there, it would have been wide open one timer. But I just wanted to point that out because it's like, um, you know, it's it's obviously very important to like get open, but sometimes part of getting open is letting the guy think that he has you covered, and then when the moment when the opportunity presents itself, just kind of swing off of him and find yourself open in space that he didn't think that you could take because he thought he had you. Um, but yeah, I, I just I just wanted to point that out because I think that's kind of like a nice little example of like you know, I don't let the guy think that he has you covered, but he doesn't really because you're still constantly moving around and and kind of anticipating what's going to happen, anticipating where the puck's going to end up, and anticipating where the lane is going to be and where you need to be to receive the pass because it's not always about standing in the opportune scoring area. Sometimes it's about standing where they can get the puck to you so that you can get a shot off. Okay, so now there's there's like, there's like gonna be a sequence here where I do a bunch of stupid crap. Um, like here, I'm into the zone, I force a pass. There's no way that pass is going through. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, we end up, you know, we have, a, we have a one goal lead late in the third period at this point. It's the kind of stupid play that can't happen. Here, another one. That guy's right in the lane. Can't, that's a, just a stupid pass. I need to be patient and reset it there or something. But, um, get it up here and again, try to force a pass over there. Um, I think that's kind of the end of what I wanted to show. But, like, I wanted to point that out because it's an example of, like, what happens when you... Like I'm, re I mean, I was really struggling at this point, just getting the puck out of our zone and getting through the neutral zone. And it's like, you know, look at the clock. This is like seven minutes left at this point. We have a one goal lead. This is the exact wrong time in the game to be like failing to get the puck up the ice. Um, but I just wanted to show this off because it's an example of like. I needed to have a little more poise. I don't know why I was like rushing to make passes so much. Like I just needed to hang on to the puck, skate it a little bit, look for a lane, look, you know, a, a passing lane or a skating lane or whatever. But instead I was like trying to force passes right away when I had room to just kind of stop, pull it back, reset a little bit, slow things down. Um, you know, mul multiple times I had the opportunity to do that and I just kind of tried to force a pass through. So I want to show you that because it's like, you know, I mean, A, I'm not immune to that stuff happening, but B, uh, it's just, you know, you really have to be responsible and, you know, and sometimes that just means having a little poise, but not, not too much that you're overconfident and, like, getting run over and just having the tip puck taken off of you, but those are situations where I was trying too hard to rush a pass for no particular reason, really, but I, I had plenty of time to just kind of settle things down and... And I, you know, got too rush happy with it. But, uh, yeah, that's just another thing to keep in mind about. And that's why having poise and being confident with the pug is so important. Because it really allows you to not just create plays, but control breakouts and control um, your zone entries and your, your ability to get through the neutral zone. All right. Well, I think that's uh, I think that's actually all I had to say about that game. Um, unfortunately, we ended up losing uh, in overtime. Off of they, they basically just scored off the off a draw immediately on a on a power play that we had because he took an interference, which is um, kind of another thing that I just wanted to say. Like, you have to be really really be careful with the right stick you don't want to like run people over when they don't have the puck obviously but 
you've been taking a lot of interference penalties lately, so you gotta really work on being careful with the with the right stick and um that one I think the puck was the puck had like bounced past you and you thought you were gonna pick it up and then you just didn't pick it up, so you went for the hit instead. Um which is just kind of unlucky, but uh, the interference is definitely something you want to watch out for. You don't want to take a lot of penalties, uh, as you know, unfortunately, in that one it, it killed us. But that one was more just kind of like the game being bad. <laughs> but um, definitely something to to keep in mind and watch out for, and you know, try to uh, try to avoid taking too many penalties, as it can cost you like it did there. But yeah, anyway, um, hopefully that's uh, hopefully that was helpful. Tried to throw in, you know, try to just uh, make a lot of general suggestions, not focusing too much on anything that any one person did, but anything that's like, you know, oh, this in general, that's like, oh, this was a good play or oh, that was a bad play, you know, just to kind of get you thinking about like what you should be doing versus what you, you know, are doing or, you know, some of the things that you are doing that are good or things that other people that are doing that are good. But anyway. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching, everybody. Hope that everybody you now watching can get something out of this. As I mean, the point of this, after all, is to coach. You know, I mean, this is Ender coaching specifically, but I hope that this is all like kind of general information that could be useful to anyone looking to just kind of improve their game and specifically like their decision making and obviously i've been looking a lot at offense i haven't really been touching defense much which may, maybe i'll go back to more in the future um for the sake of you know having giving more general advice and you know things that can help anybody watching but for now i'm focused on the offense because i think that's what uh you have to work on the most is just you know creating plays and finishing plays and stuff like that as i said before but yeah, thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.